Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be unboxing or should I say unpacking some stuff. Now if you aren't aware of my previous videos when I did my comparison between the Fimi XA to SE and the Mavic outside I developed a trapped nerve in my neck which basically left me in bed for two weeks and I was unable to move. Now these copters can fly up to 33 minutes, certainly the Femi can, and I was looking up at them line of sight the entire time when they were right above me. So my neck went further back than it's meant to, and it's also something that runs in the family. Actually, it's why my dad stopped flying, and I thought it was some kind of excuse for him to get out of flying with me, but I can see why something like this would want him to stop. Now I'm improving and I thought I'd test the water by making the sensor test with the same two models indoors and the tallow of course, which is the previous video to this one. But the next day it was like taking two steps back and I was flying them line of sight. So you heard it here first folks, visual line of sight is more damaging to your health than FPV and I have proved it. <laughs> and it's been really frustrating because I live for flying and making videos and I've had to slow the pace down in order for me to improve. However, during this time, packages have been turning up and I've no idea what they are, so I thought it would be fun to unpack some of them and see what we have. And I can only apologize to the companies that have sent ones that I haven't bought myself, that I'm only just opening them now. By the way, I'm also under NDA for a few items, so if there are more boxes here than get opened, then it's because I'm not allowed to talk about them yet. But from what I know, there is some pretty exciting stuff in the pipeline. For example, I think it would be okay to say that a fairly well-known company has a bind and fly freestyle copter coming out that looks awesome and I can't wait for that. And a well-known transmitter company has a big surprise on the way as well. And that's all I'm going to say because I've been known to ruin people's marketing campaign strategies in the past by giving too much away. By the way, the one saving grace about me feeling awful for not being able to make videos has been the weather. It really has been shocking for the time that I've been ill. I think we've had two storms, which we now name. So we've had Freya and we've now got Gareth and you might even be able to hear him in the background of this video. And this naming of storms is fairly new here, by the way. We just used to say, oh, it's a little bit windy, but I think we're becoming more Americanized every year, and I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I mean, we have Black Friday now, that was never a thing. I'm just trying to think what we can give you back because we have some weird stuff like we have pancake day. Now we don't get the day off work, but we have a designated day for eating pancakes. We call it Shrove Tuesday. So we can give you that. Take that from us. You are welcome. I think we do something for the Queen's birthday as well, but we don't get a day off for that. Actually, the Queen once drove past my school and we all had to stand on the side of the road and wave. But then the cars turned up and they were all limos with blacked out windows and we saw nothing. But to be fair, if I was the Queen and took one look around the area of my old school, the first thing I would do is get those windows up and power through that 20 zone like it was a highway. See, I said highway, but we call them motorways here. Oh man, I have spent just too long on my own. What am I talking about? Let's see what we have got here. Alrighty, let's start off with this one. Now there's probably gonna be a lot of jump cuts because I don't actually know what I've got here. And yes, I know I probably need a better knife. Let's see what we have got in here. We've got some bubble wrap. And this is usually how diatone like to package their things. So let me get this out of here and jump cut. It's the Rabbit 349NX. 
Max. So I think this is the GTR 349. Now I know about this one actually because I watched Stu from UAV Futures video on it and the moment that that video came out everybody messaged me and said oh you're gonna be reviewing this guy so yeah here we have it this is the one with the run cam version so you can get it with a unify and you can also get it with a split mini as well and I think the reason why this one is so interesting is that it got a really fast speed. I think it got it up to 113 mile per hour. And the fastest I've ever had a 3 inch model go was the Skyzone S140. And I think that hit 112 mile per hour. So not really that much different. And that is using the RCN power. 1506 4100 kV motors. Let's cut the knife into these bits of tape and see what we've got inside. So, a bunch of stickers. Oh, look at that. We have got different colored canopies and then a translucent canopy. So, what's the deal with this one? So, the motors are Mamba branded and we've got 1408 and we've got 4000 kV motors. So, yeah, it should be interesting. Now, there was one thing that I noticed about Stu's video. Now, I'm a good friend of Stu, but in his video he said, I made a couple of small changes and one of those changes was that he clipped off the XT30 connector and put an XT60 on there, which is not really a small change. You see, XT30s are rated for 30 amps, that's what the 30 stands for. In reality, I found that they can cope to up to about 87 amps. But the XT60 is rated for 60 amps, and in reality, I think I've seen those go up to 140, 150. So changing the connector there might have quite a lot of difference. I imagine Stu just did it because he didn't have a battery with that connector on it. It's the only reason I can think of doing that, but I will review it as it is and we'll see how fast it goes and then maybe we can switch out the connector and see if it improves the speed. But it's a three inch copter, it looks fantastic, it has got the F25 Mamba stack, we've got a loose cable tie here for some reason, not sure what that's about. What else have we got in the package? Because I'm not seeing any props. Oh, there we go. We got props. So, yeah, it looks like we have got the Gemfan Flash 3052, which is the same prop that I got on this guy. So, yeah, looking forward to checking this guy out. And we've got a bunch of spares here as well. Now, I'm hoping that this next package is going to be related to these guys because, as I mentioned, this is the fastest 3-inch model that I've ever recorded at around about 112 mile per hour. And I've always loved these RC in power motors. But they don't have a naked bottom, so they could be a little bit lighter. And, once again, recognising the box, I am hoping that what we have in here are some updated versions of those motors. I could be wrong though, I could be wrong, but let's take a look. So let's just get the knife in there and see what we've got in here. We've got, well, a bunch of motors that say RCM power, so that's good. Let me empty all of these out. Holy moly, there are a lot of motors in here. Ah, there is a label on the side. So this says GTS V2 2207 18650 kV motors. So those are going to be 6S motors, but let's just have a look. Ah, here we go. There we go, 1506 4300 kV motors. Let's have a look what we have got in here. Wow, those are pretty. And look at this, naked bottom and we also have got a protector to stop the heat shrink catching the bow. Now I think 
I can stick those on there. What are they? A 1506. And those are a 1506. But just look how much smaller the footprint is. So I imagine they're a lot lighter and with them being a higher KV they're gonna rev higher as well. So maybe we can break the speed record with this motor. What else do we get? We just get some screws. So not a lot of stuff. I'll link to all of this in the below so you can check out the prices because the prices change all the time and they make me look like an idiot. But at the same time, let's check out this 2207 motor because 6S is really popular now. In fact, I'm going to be doing a 6S freestyle model at some point. I'm going to be doing a build. So, yeah, same again, same colour scheme, very pretty, we've got silicon wires, again, naked bottom, yeah, really nice, we've got anything else in there, so, looks like we have got a bunch of different screws, again, probably for different arm thicknesses, yeah, that is cool. So keeping on the subject of motors, I have actually already unboxed these and I've had them for quite a while but I think they definitely deserve a showing because I think they are the prettiest motors that I've ever seen, especially in this purple colour. Hmm, matches the bed. And you can get them in all sorts of sizes, so you can have a 4S motor you can have a 6s so this one here is a 2450 kv and it's a 2306 and if you think there is a prettier motor out there than this then link me in the below because as i say i'm a, a little bit out of the game being ill but these look superb so we've got a hex screw underneath and then we've got a hollow shaft and then we've got all of these spokes here these are like alloy wheels with motors these days we've got a naked bottom again but we've also got the lip to stop the heat shrink catching and then we have got the silicon wire so yeah really like this and then we've got same coloured nut and we've got some screws as well and it looks like they've already got Loctite on them. Then they sent me these ones here which I'm guessing are a different size but I'll link them in the below because you can get all sorts now and all sorts of different colours. I'm not sure about the ones that are multicoloured though. I'm not sure those are very pretty but wow these ones are so kind of like black on the sides and then red on the top. What we've we got here 2450 kV and these are a 2207 so everything is 4S here but yeah same packaging and by the way if you have used these let me know if they are any good. I'm going to be putting this on the iFlight build that I'm going to be doing but I hear great things about them and they just ooze quality. So as I mentioned I'm going to be building a 6S freestyle copter because I reviewed the Ishim Wizard X220 HV and I thought it was a bit of a letdown. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh but I think if they had just upgraded the ESCs and had the XT60 connector come in on the outside, maybe added a capacitor, then it would have been a hit. But for me it can't be trusted. People say, oh no, if you try it on 6s and use all of these settings then it won't do the death roll i did all of that and i just felt scared every time i was flying it because let's face it it is not a lightweight copter and it's unpredictable and people are flying it on 4s and that's absolutely fine but 
you know, it's going to be underpowered on 4S compared to 6S, so I want to build a 6S freestyle copter. So I am going to do it, and I'm going to do it for the same price as the X220 HV, although you're going to have to build it, so there is that. And I was looking at motors. Now I was going to use this motor, and I probably am going to use this motor. It's the DYS Samguk motor, but it is the low KV version of it. Yeah, so I did my 100 GBP build and these motors have been fantastic. Now when these motors originally came out in 4S form, people complained about the bearings, but I haven't had any issues with that with the latest batch that I used. So yeah, I like these motors and I'm probably going to be using these. So these are 1750 kV and they are a 2306. So the same size stator motor that is on the Wizard. Now when I was looking for cheap 6S motors, I came across these Racer Star motors. Now they are not 6S motors, but they are fairly cheap. And I thought, well, maybe if the bearings go in the Samguk motors, which they haven't, then I could give these a try because they are relatively cheap. They are a 2306 and they also are the Popo style, so the props just clip on. Now I've got no experience of these Popo motors and I hear good things and I hear bad things and I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys use them and if you think these will be any good. Okay, let's go back into the unknown a little bit because I have got absolutely no idea what this thing is. Let's take a look at it. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Gap RC. Where's that come from? Oh, there we go. Look at this, the Signet Pro. Ah, oh, man, that is awesome because I absolutely loved the Signet, one of my favorite sub 250 gram models. I guess you could call it a Cine Copter. So, ah, oh, yeah, let's get this open and take a look at it. I think it's interesting how Gap RC put finish on the underside here. I think this is meant to be a racetrack and that's the finish line, but it kind of suggests this is the finished product and it's got no issues whatsoever. Oh, it looks like this is the R9M version. Look at that comes sealed and everything. We have got the Runcam M12 lens, but we've got bigger motors this time. So we've got 1507 and can I see the KV anywhere? Oh man, I'm gonna have to get the knife to it. So the motors are 3600 kV, which is not the highest KV for a 15 stator motor as we saw earlier. And of course it's going to be slightly heavier than the non-pro version because the motors are bigger. So if you are concerned about the 250 gram thing then you may want to take that into consideration because I think that's the only thing that has changed. We've got the Runcam Split Mini here. I would have liked to have seen a Cadex Turtles, you know, because I think that has become my favorite camera for the all-in-one solution. But this thing just oozes quality and I still think I'm gonna absolutely love it. So what else have we got here? You get so much stuff with Gep RC. You get like, battery straps that you don't even need and yeah they're a premium product but I really like them. So we are a little bit more in the known here because I've removed the packaging of this one but I've not actually opened the box and I think it's the Diatone 569 so it's like a special edition version so if we lift this off here oh we've got some basic unpacking guidelines. What's it say here? Please read the yellow tip card, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll do all that when I do the 
proper review. Can I, actually, can I get the thing out without having to, yes, I can. So it comes in this little sealed bag here, and let's take a look at it. Wow, very smart. So let's take a look at the motors, 2207, oh, 2650 kV. So no, that can't be the 6S version, so they must do a 4S version. Yeah, I think it's called the Diatone 549. So yeah, 5.6 will be 6S and 5.4 will be 4S. Yeah, it's like a special edition thing. It's got like a cat logo under there and it's basically the GTR Rabbit and then they have used this TPU thing on the top here. And they sent this to me as a prototype and I think it's going to change because I think they've had a problem with the camera. We've got a Cadex camera in here and I think it's getting jello so I think they're going to switch out the camera but we have got the Mamba stack that I used in my cheap build and then the F4 flight controller and then we've got the Unify here one thing that is sticking out to me though is we've got a lollipop antenna but it is surrounded by the TPU mount. Now, I don't know if any of you have been watching Painless 360's series on antennas, but it was discovered that if you start wrapping stuff around the antennas, it can actually detune them. So, Diatone, this isn't actually a good thing. And I went to the NEC drone show, actually, and everybody had their antennas mounted like this. And when I looked through my goggles, the picture was absolutely awful. Yeah, so go and watch that series because it's really interesting because each antenna is tuned for a particular frequency. So, yeah, if you stick to a particular frequency, then there's an antenna that you might want to use over another one. But we've got a low ESR capacitor coming out of the back there as well. This is interesting, isn't it? So, we have got these wires here, but then we've also got this board. You'd think that would create resistance, wouldn't you? and there's no telling how thick the traces are so yeah look at that it goes from the arm and then it goes into the ESC board but yeah I don't know looks looks pretty cool I like it one criticism though is yeah it's got all of these nice decals but it'd be a bottom mount battery so you're gonna want to put a non-slip pad on that and it's gonna cover up the graphic just have the two screws on there as well anyways I'll do a full review of this guy but actually it's a prototype so you know I think it's gonna change I think they're gonna change the camera from what I hear but there you go that is the Diatone and it's actually the 4S version, not the 6S, so I apologize for that. So while on the subject of the NEC drone show and antennas, I met Greg from Menace RC there who gave me his Thrasher antenna, so it's like a mini Pagoda antenna for racers. He also gave me this as well. So this is the Numskull patch antenna. Let me get this thing open. Just look at this thing. It looks mad and it's quite large as well. And in previous videos, I've mentioned that Furious FPV have come out with a 2.4 gigahertz VTX that also has a smart audio protocol that works in beta flight. And the reason that they have done that is because now we have Crossfire and R9. That frees up 2.4 gigahertz for video and Furious FPV also have a diversity True D module that you can buy and the benefit of that is that 2.4 gigahertz has got a 
longer wavelength, so it will penetrate better than 5.8. It will have longer range and we should get better video reception. So this is for using with that and I'm going to be doing a build of a copter using the 2.4 system. I've just got so much to do. It's just really exciting but it takes a lot of time so please be patient but this stuff is going to be interesting. And finally on the subject of Menace while I was at the NEC I got some of these LEDs which are absolutely crazy. You would not believe how bright they are. In fact they put a pair of sunglasses and they had put them on a copter and you press a button and if you don't wear the sunglasses then you go blind. You can't control the colour of them but you can buy them in different colours and you can also connect them up to beta flight to turn them on and off as well. Um, you do have to install a regulator because I think they run off 3 volts but they include all of that so I will link to all of that in the below and we can create some UFOs in the sky honestly I'll overlay some footage because I couldn't believe how bright these things were now Gearbest sent me this and I know what you're thinking it's been a very lonely time as I've been sick and it definitely looks very unusual but don't panic because what this is, is the gimbal holder for the Mi 4K. So if you've got a Mi 4K, you can remove the camera and plunk it on the top and you've got a handheld gimbal. So I thought I'd try that out because I have got the DJI Osmo Pocket Mini and this is a much cheaper option so I thought it'd be interesting to see what the difference is and I also think the field of view will be much wider than the Osmo. That is a complaint that I have of the Osmo and also that the microphone on it isn't very good and you have to buy an adapter to put a microphone on it. So I've also now got rapid fire but it's taken like a year to get here so you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments if this is worth having anymore because yeah as I say it's taken such a long time to get here and I haven't touched my HDO since they came back from Fat Shark because I've just been loving the HD3s. I know you can do a mod for the HD3s but yeah I have a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth from the HDOs from all of the problems that I had but is it worth me checking the rapid fire out guys let me know in the comments because I have it but I don't know if it's still relevant so we've got another package here but I have already shown this one on the channel so it's the beta 85X and you'll remember that my ESC caught fire and they published a statement saying that they'd done a bunch of tests and I was really impressed with that. They've also sent a battery with it this time and said not to use 4S. However, I talked to my friend NJ Tech, or go and subscribe to NJ Tech if you haven't already, and he has played around with the PIDs a lot and he is running this guy on 4S and hasn't had any problems and he thinks that it is the PIDs that they are using. He thinks that because the motors are so small you can't hear the D-term oscillations and if you look at the PIDs of these they are extremely high and they're 32-bit ESCs as well so you know they are really being driven with those high PIDs so yeah I'm gonna copy NJ's PIDs, NJ, if you will give them to me. Uh, maybe I'll try it on 4S because I did find it a little bit sluggish on 3S. This next one is a weird one. It's made by JJRC and it's designed to attach to your glasses so that you can do FPV 
and line of sight at the same time. So it comes in this package here and it's kind of like the Google Glass, but it's a lot cheaper than the Google Glass. Somebody actually bought a pair of those Google Glasses and they gave me a go of it and I thought they were rubbish. I thought the picture was rubbish and the picture of this thing is way better, funnily enough, but of course it doesn't connect to your phone. So it comes with some glasses, but I wear glasses so I don't need that. And then we have got a USB cable and we've got some instructions. This thing is a lot cheaper than Google Glasses. The one thing I don't like though is that the battery comes apart so easily, but it fits on the glasses nicely. You've got this clip here and the way that you turn it on, I think, is you hold that down. I'm probably not going to be able to show you an image. Ah, oh, there you go. Little 16 by 9 FBV screen in there. I don't know. Would you guys be interested in me reviewing this thing? I wonder if you could fly a 5 inch with it safely. I'm not sure I'd feel so safe. Maybe a micro though or something like that. But when you wear them, of course, your screen is just floating so you can see everything that is line of sight but it can also be quite distracting as well but there you go a lot cheaper than the Google Glass. I'll link it in the below if you can still buy it. Next we've got this big box and once again I've got no idea what's inside it. We've got some tape down the side uh, but we've got staples as well. Oh, uh, jump cut! Oh, I think I found a way in. I don't think it's the right way in, but sometimes the wrong way in is the best way in, isn't it? Ah, uh, look what we've got here. All right, let me get this sorted in a presentable way. So what we have here is the Wingsland M1, and if you couldn't tell, recently I've been enjoying the affordable side of aerial photography, and this has got to be one of the cheapest. It comes in at 199 GBP, which I think is $268, but don't quote me on that. I'll link it in the below. And it's a GPS quadcopter that has got a three-axis gimbal. It's 1080p, so it is HD. It's not 4K. It doesn't have any sensors, but it does have a transmitter and it comes with a battery and apparently it flies for 25 minutes. We'll have to see if that is the case. And the battery connects really strangely. We've got two connectors here and in here somewhere we've got a USB connector. So I'm not sure what that's for. Again, we're going to have to look at all of the instructions. We've got a 5200 milliamp battery and it is a 3S and it looks like that it's got some kind of indicators on it. As I say, I need to do more research on it. Can we see where the micro SD card goes? So yeah, that's just in the side there. Of course, no object avoidance, but for this price, I wouldn't expect that. Transmitter, yeah, quite toyish, but you know, if it does the job, look at that DSSS. I think that is a form of spectrum, isn't it? When it comes to protocol, let's take a look. It's probably just going to be batteries in the back, hmm, not too fond of that, and that isn't going on very easily. What else have we got? So we've got a USB cable there. Maybe it uses APM or something with USB or it's just for upgrading firmware. We have got something to hold the monitor on because it comes with a monitor. So it must be using 5.8 gigahertz, I guess, or some form of analog video for the video feed. And we've got a charger here, 
and we have got some propellers so just one set of propellers and then we have got this little device here and that is for tightening the props up so that should be an interesting one because I'm all about the affordable side of aerial photography. So next we have the Parrot and Affy and I've wanted one of these guys ever since I visited the disused cooling towers. I thought how cool would it be to be able to look up through those towers and also from the outside as well and have a shot where it pans up. That is its unique selling point and I got this one from Amazon it's still sealed this is the extended version so it cost me 729 GBP and you can get the battery kit version for 629 GBP and you can get the base version for 549 GBP now all of those prices are a lot higher than the Fimi X8 SE which basically does the same things and has very similar specs of course the camera doesn't face up on this one but this one is 383 GBP so it is half the price of this guy anyways I haven't even opened this guy yet, it is still sealed, so let's unseal it and see what is inside. Okay, so first of all it looks like a pair of shoes, so I'm gonna take this off. And we have got a carry case, so everything must be in there, I guess. So let's take a look. At what we've got so this is the main compartment here so that lifts up like so this is the first time that I'm seeing this and straight away I can see that the controller is of very poor quality compared to the Femi and I knew this already because I've seen reviews of it these just feel really low quality these are definitely xbox style parts so not proper gimbals so yeah that is a disappointment especially for the price i think so yeah this is the extra battery version so we've got some covers there and then the batteries and I think it flies for 25 minutes it says here so the Femi I did record it flying for 33 minutes so this one is winning there this one also wins slightly on range so this one will do five kilometers and I think this one they say 2.5 miles, which I think is 4 kilometers. So, what else have we got here? We've got a bunch of manuals and it looks like spare propellers. We have got some USB Type C there, I think. Are they all USB Type C? They all look like it. So, what else? I think that's everything in there. I'm guessing that the copter is in this top part. So there we go. Oh wow, so yeah, it's actually quite a bit smaller than the Femi and it's lighter as well. Those motors are absolutely tiny in comparison. Yeah, so this one perhaps more portable and we've also got a battery on there. We've got a 3-axis gimbal that does 4K, of course, and the arms just fold out like this, but it's more like a dead cat configuration, I guess you would say. And that is probably so the camera can lift all the way up, maybe? I don't know, because if you were to do that, with any DJI, even if you removed the top part, you would get the props in shot. 
Now, the elephant in the room that I see, though, is that it's great that we can look upwards. However, if we are looking upwards and not paying attention to where we are flying, there's no object avoidance and we could quite easily run into the thing that we are looking up at. But what have we got underneath? So, just like the Fimi X8, we've got an optical flow camera and an ultrasonic sensor. So they are very similar in that way. The only thing that has surprised me is the size difference. This thing is absolutely tiny in comparison. So yeah, look at the size difference. This thing is a lot smaller than the Fimi. However, you have to remember it is double the price. At least I paid double the price, but I've explained this in other videos. In the UK, we get ripped off with everything. So we basically pay in GBP what America pays in dollars for everything, and it's not equivalent. So it's a little bit unfair. And yes, you can probably get a Parrot Anafi for a lot cheaper living in a different country and that will probably bring the price closer to the X8 SE but here at least the price is quite considerably different. Now of course this is my first time looking at this thing so I'm not sure what the functions do it's just an unboxing but I can only imagine that this is for the gimbal movement up and down this looks like the zoom function so yeah it has a digital zoom and then we've got USB here so I imagine that is USB out to your mobile device and then we've got USB here and I would imagine that is for charging but don't quote me on that and then this lifts up and it looks like it turns on automatically when it lifts up and we've got a home button there and then that's probably a automatic takeoff and land button perhaps I could be completely wrong and there doesn't seem to be much movement there. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, maybe a small tablet and a phone. And the reason I think I've got three of these is I've got three batteries. And it looks like the batteries just charge by using USB-C. So... That's why they give me three of those. Something that I'm not seeing though are any connectors to connect the controller to a mobile device. So with the FIMI you get a lightning connector for Apple and you get a USB type C and you also get a USB micro. So I don't know whether it's the case whether it connects to the phone via Wi-Fi or you just have to source your own connector because we definitely have got the connectors here. This isn't a review, it's an unboxing so I'll have to do more research on that. Okay so these are the last things. We've got something from Amazon here and this is something that I've had to buy because I have got a confession to make. So the Fimi X8 SE and the Mavic and the Phantom 4 when they are running at 4K and specifically the Fimi at 100 megabit my SD cards are not fast enough in fact the app bitches at me saying your SD card isn't fast enough and it stops recording so actually in my videos some people mentioned that the Mavic's footage looks better but that's because I couldn't have the Fimi on the highest setting so it was never at a hundred megabit and sometimes it would stop on the 60 megabit as well so I have gone and bought some ultra fast micro SD cards and I think the Fimi is gonna have a much better quality when 
using these cards and it'll stop the app complaining at me and the recording won't stop which happens with all of them it's the data rate you see they have to be fast and these are not cheap either now around about three minutes into these videos people make a comment something like oh it's like christmas day for you and yeah i can see how it seems like that the only difference is when you get loads of stuff on christmas day you get to open it you get to enjoy it you don't have to spend 16 hours editing a video together you don't have to keep recharging your batteries because some dog jumped up at you or some woman shouted at the dog and it interrupted what you were saying in your flow and it made you forget your figures and stuff like that now don't get me wrong i absolutely love doing this but it is far from like christmas day however this here is not drone related it's something I've bought myself and I don't have to make a video on it if I don't want to. So let me get it open and we'll take a look at what it is. So this is the Nikon Coolpix P1000 and I've been waiting for it for about four years. You see, four years ago Nikon released the P900 and they are super zoom cameras and I can show you that so this one has a 83 times zoom and the reason that I have it is I'm obsessed with space I'll overlay some pictures and videos that I have taken with this camera and we've got a telescope here as well but it's really huge and massive and it's difficult to set up and you can get some really good pictures and videos with these super zoom cameras now i've had to sell my panasonic camera in order to pay for this but i find panasonic cameras are terrible for autofocus so i stopped using them and i sold it but then this guy came out and it has got i believe 125 times zoom so that is an equivalent of 3000 millimeters if you know about cameras so this one's 2000 millimeters here and this one is 3000 it also does 4k this one does 1080p now i'm not sure if that's actually going to benefit because when we're on the ground we get distortions in the atmosphere and that actually makes the resolution obsolete really because we get kind of like a shimmer so it doesn't really matter whether it's 4k or 1080p you're still not going to get a completely clear image unless you do image processing which I also do but I just couldn't resist because it's got a bigger zoom on it and I really love space and I've mentioned before I wanted to do space stuff for the channel and photography and videos and things like that and go through my telescope but it, I just don't have the time to run two channels. Hopefully one day I'll have the time. I'm either doing 100% drone stuff or I'm ill and there's no in between. But hopefully I'll be able to get some nice shots with this guy and I'm really excited to try it out. Just a slight size comparison. Mine's bigger than yours type of thing. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, it's the best that I can do at the moment and as always thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.